lesson, we are going to fill out the 2D shape hierarchy. And this helps us classify 2D shapes and all those fun questions we encounter about, you know, what can this shape be classified as? We know some shapes can be called six different things. And so this will kind of help you use this flow chart to know what each one is called. So we're going to start at the very top, and that is where we put the polygons. And remember, polygons are three or more sides straight sides, and their closed figure. So everything we're going to talk about today can be classified as a polygon, okay? Then we're going to start with the easy ones. They only have two names. They're going to be called polygon and then their actual name. The first one is a pentagon. Remember, a pentagon has five sides. The next one we're going to talk about is a hexagon. And remember, a hexagon has six sides. I remember the X and hex, the six and six. In pentagon, I remember I use my five fingers to hold my pen, so that helps me remember pentagon. The next thing we have has seven sides. It's a septagon, or you might also hear a sevenagon. And then our next one is a octagon. Remember, an octagon, octopus, it has eight sides. A nine-sided figure is called a nonagon, and then our ten-sided figure is called a decagon. So any of these shapes could be called pentagon and a polygon, a hexagon and a polygon, a septagon and a polygon. And so you could classify them as two things. Now let's go back and let's look a little further down the hierarchy. Off a of polygon, I have two things that we really look at in fourth grade, and that is my quadrilaterals. Oops, sorry, I'm not sure why that keeps popping up. Is my quadrilaterals and my triangles. Let's go down the triangle side first, because it's a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So anytime I see triangle, I could also classify it as a polygon. Then I can take a triangle and classify it two different ways. I can classify it by its sides, or I can classify it by its angles. Now remember when we're talking angles, the word arrows should pop in your head. Acute, right, obtuse, and straight. Now notice there's only three spots in the triangle part for the angles, so we're gonna use an acute triangle a right triangle, and an obtuse triangle. An acute triangle has all three angles acute. A right triangle has one right angle, and the other two are acute. And my obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle, and the other two are acute. So notice every triangle has at least two acute triangles. Because when I add all the inside angles of a triangle together, they have to equal 180. So if I had two right angles, 90 plus 90, that's already 180. So then I'm missing that other angle because I've already hit my 180. So it has to have two acute. The right has to have two acute and the obtuse has to have two acute. We can also do it by the sides. There's an equilateral triangle, a scalene triangle, and an isosceles triangle. I remember this, equilateral means all sides are equal. And when you look at this E, there are three equal sides in the E. Scalene means that none of the sides are congruent. And I think about every time I step on the scale, my weight is different, it's never the same. So scaling means zero equal sides. Then we have our last one, which is an isosceles, and that means two sides are equal. And I remember the letter I, the top and the bottom are equal. So when you come to the triangles, 
you can remember that you can classify them by their angles or by their sides, okay? And so if I said an equilateral triangle, I could also classify that as a polygon because if we go up on our hierarchy, that tells us what we can do. Okay, so let's zoom in to the other side now, the quad side. Remember, quad means having four sides, okay? So if I say a quadrilateral, I can also call it a polygon. Okay, from a quad, we have two types of quads. We have what we know as parallelograms, and we have what we know as trapezoids. And then from there, we can branch off. So let's look at the trapezoid first because that side's a lot smaller. So my trapezoid can look something like this. And what trapezoid means is it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Remember, parallel means that they do not touch. They're equal distance apart. Now, I know you're probably saying, but these don't touch either. But if I expand them out, they eventually will cross. So a trapezoid has one set of parallel sides. And so if I say this shape is a trapezoid, I can also say it's a quadrilateral, and I can also say it's a polygon. So I could call it three different things. I could call it trapezoid, quadrilateral, and a polygon. Now let's come over here to these other shapes. Now we have a parallelogram. A parallelogram just means that it has two sets of parallel sides. So these two sides are parallel to each other and these two sides are parallel to each other. So if I say a parallelogram, I can go, oh, that's also a quad and that's also a polygon. Okay, let's look at our next shape. From a parallelogram, you can go two ways. You can either have a rectangle or you can have a rhombus. Rhombus meaning all sides are congruent. So a rhombus also has two sets of parallel sides. So if I were to say a rhombus and ask you, give me all the ways you can classify it, well, you could say, well, a rhombus is also known as a parallelogram. It's also known as a quadrilateral, and it's also known as a polygon. So it can be classified one, two, three, four different ways. Now let's look at a rectangle. And our rectangle is also a parallelogram because these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel. So I can say a parallel, uh, is, uh, sorry, a triangle, a uh, rectangle, I'll get it right in a minute. A rectangle is a rectangle. It's also a parallelogram. It's also a quadrilateral and it is also a polygon. So I can classify it any way that is above it in the flow chart. So the more we go down, the more specific we get to the name. And the more we go up, the broader the name is, so the more things can be classified underneath it. Okay, let's go to the king of all quadrilaterals, our last dude, and that is a square. Now remember a square means four congruent sides. Opposite sides are parallel, so it's also a parallelogram. It has four sides, so it's a quadrilateral, and it's a polygon. Okay, so let's look at a square. So I can classify it as a rectangle. I can classify it as a rhombus. I can classify it as a parallelogram. I can classify it as a quadrilateral. I can classify it as a polygon, and the most specific specific name is a square. I can classify it as a square. So we call him the king of all quadrilaterals because he can be classified as the most things. He can be classified as two, three, four, five, six different names. So this hierarchy will help you answer those questions of, you know, what sides have, what shapes have two sets of parallel sides? Well, that would be anything that is a parallelogram. You know, can you call a square a rectangle? Yes, you can tell by this hierarchy. So learn the hierarchy and it will help you out greatly.